What is the grossest thing or behavior you have seen in a restaurant slash buffet? My family and I owned a restaurant at one point, so we have quite a few stories. One of the most gluttonous things we witnessed was a man who ordered a huge amount of food. He then proceeded to stuff his face until he threw up all over the table. That's right, he stuffed himself until he vomited. Did he clean it up? No. Did he stop eating? Of course not. What he did do was pick up his plate and move to another table to continue eating. After finishing his s'more gas board, he proceeded to fill up his drinking cup with the free soft serve ice cream offered and left. I'll never forget when I was a teenager and working the buffet line at a Ponderosa Steakhouse, this morbidly obese child, probably like eight-ish, had a plate with a mountain of food, like some of literally almost everything from the buffet. Mashed potatoes, pizza, chicken wings, jello pudding, like everything piled on top of each other. So I go up to him because it was bizarre, and I'm like hey you know you can use a second plate? He said I'm only allowed to have one plate so like his parents were trying to restrict his diet, and he just found a loophole. But, if you have a kid with this sort of issue, maybe don't go to a buffet. What the hell? I once worked at Red Lobster, and we offered all-you-can-eat crab legs, fried shrimp, popcorn shrimp and fried flounder. Usually after maybe the third refill, most people would give up. However, we had this one large man who came every Tuesday and gorged himself on plate after plate of food. He eventually earned the nickname It's Alive, and servers would refuse to wait on him because he was not a generous tipper. It got to the point where I was the only one who would wait on him. On one memorable occasion, he ate 23 plates of food. It was terrible and scary to watch because I was always afraid he was going to have a heart attack and drop dead. Back when I worked for Carl's Jr., we had a nice salad bar. One night, a very large couple came in and ordered two all-you-can-eat salads. We would give the guests about a nine-inch oval plate. They said they did not want the plates. What happened next I still remember clearly. They removed the paper tray liners from their serving trays. Then they divided the entire salad mix bowl evenly onto the two tray. From there, they lifted the crocks of toppings, one at a time, out of the rings in the ice and proceeded to dump each onto their beds of lettuce. They emptied the salad bar almost entirely save the dressing they did not want. In a matter of minutes, the poor high school girl tasked with keeping up the bar had to spend a good 30 minutes refilling everything. And, as it was unlimited, they went back and they repeated the process. Near the end, they approached our assistant manager for carry-out containers. When he explained that taking their leftovers home was not allowed, the man started shouting. The assistant manager stayed calm and repeated the rules, clearly noted on the menu as dine in only. So what did they do? They overturned their trays on the table, and behind them, they left a mess of epic proportions. Three of us worked to clean up their mess and about half the salad bar items were completely wiped out for the next day. I can only imagine what the opening crew thought of the night shift slackers the following morning for not backstocking everything. One time I went with my parents and some relatives to the Paris Buffet in Las Vegas. My dad was starving himself all day so he could fill up on crab legs at the buffet. So anyway, these relatives are just bitter, slow-ass people who make the whole day miserable. One of them is a very old woman in a wheelchair that my dad is pushing around all day. Basically he's hot and hungry and miserable, but excited for dinner. Then right when we get to dinner, the old lady throws up all over the table. Stinky, old lady vomit that would bother anyone, but my dad specifically is a sympathy puker. The relatives tried to complain and say the food made her sick, but we didn't even eat yet. We ended up leaving without eating anything. Some other tables nearby cleared out as well. I was really young when this happened, but I remember my dad walking towards the table with a huge plate of crab legs and big smile, and then his face just totally falling. LOL. I was at a Shoney's restaurant in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. There was a family that would come in several times a week. The two young boys, mother and father, would go through the buffet line with the father laying three plates down one arm and pushing two plates ahead of him on the tray. He would fill every plate and proceed to a booth to eat. The mother would fill her plate along with the two boys' plates. They would follow him to the table and eat. The waitress would bring the drinks and take away the empty plates as they ate. The father would shovel food in without looking up or talking to the rest of the family. His wife would make repeated trips to the buffet line to fill additional plates with whatever he liked. The two boys and the mother would finish their meal and wait on him to finish whatever he was eating. After he was finished eating they would leave. The waitresses would have to clean the booth where he sat as he would drop food constantly while he ate. 
the rest of the booth would have hardly any food or clean up. The small boy spilled less food than the father did. Not mine, but I had a buddy who was 400 plus pounds, and the dude could put away some food. He went to a casino buffet that was one of the higher end ones that had crab legs and steak. On about his fourth or fifth plate stack full of crab legs, the manager came out and gave him $250 in free slot play to leave the buffet. Edit. So, I linked this to my buddy who pointed out that there were two other dudes there, and none of them was under 300 pounds. They killed a metric fuck ton of food between them, and he was putting them to shame. The buffet was higher end so it was $50 a person, but they easily all ate probably 3 to 4 times that, and he ate probably 8 to 10 times that worth in food. He then went on to win just over $100 with that free slot play as well. If you can beat the casinos at their games, beat them at the bar or buffet. I attempted this on one occasion when I was a kid. Some friends and I decided to go to Old Country Buffet during lunch time and try to stick around for dinner, and we weren't the only ones. Why would anyone do this? Because the lunch buffet was cheaper than the dinner buffet. Because the dinner buffet had premium items. When you came in and paid for lunch, they would give you a sign that said lunch to put on your table. If you didn't have a sign on your table, they would ask you to leave. So we would come about 30 minutes before dinner and pay for lunches, get our sign, sit down and eat. Our plan was to eat a light lunch, wait for the premium items to be put out, and get back in line for dinner. So as we slowly ate our food, the time for the cooks to switch over to dinner loomed closely. Our plan was to rush the buffet, fill our plates with food, and then get back to our table before anyone noticed that we were still flying a lunch flag. After we'd emptied our plates, we hunched over the table in anticipation. We'd only filled our plates lightly knowing that we'd soon be filling them with chicken wings, pork chops, fried chicken, potato salad and the piece de resistance, roasted prime rib. Our mouths were wet with anticipation. Then out of nowhere a necktied manager came out and started cordoning off the buffet with ropes. Our plan was foiled. We'd only made one trip to the buffet, and now we were behind a rope. The manager eyed us with disdain, he knew what we were up to and cut us off at the knees. Our only remaining option was to gorge ourselves on soft-serve ice cream, cake and pie, since those items were still outside of their barrier. I've never eaten so much cheap ice cream and pie in one sitting in my life. The premium dinner would have to wait. A few years back when Golden Corral first got the chocolate fountains, I went there and was going to try it out. As I was walking up to the fountain and I started to contemplate what I was going to have, a toddler takes his drink and just pours that motherfucker into the fountain and ruins it. So anyways, the manager comes over and is going ballistic because they had just set it up for the day, and now they would completely have to replace the chocolate. Shortly after, this man comes up and decides he wants some chocolate brownies, but he can't as the machine is being purged in the back of the place, so what does he do? The guy just puts his tray down and leaves the restaurant, goes to the toddler's family's car and slashes their tires. He was never caught after that. That man was a different kind of devoted that the world needs. Years ago, I worked at an all-you-can-eat country buffet in South Carolina. I was a busboy. One day, I went to a table. It was a mess, as per usual. It looked to be a large family group of families of around 12 people or so. The thing that stuck it in my memory is that whenever they had finished with what they were going to eat, they would scrape their plate and use it again. Scrape their plates onto the floor next to their chairs. So next to each chair, there was a 6-inch to 18-inch pile of chicken bones, crab legs, mashed potatoes, remnants of back potatoes, etc. Just disgusting. Not an employee, but when my family was on vacation in Florida we went to all-you-can-eat pizza place. For dessert they had these really tasty sticky buns that were in big demand. So me and my dad are in line to get one, and once they put them out some big guy at the front of the line, literally just picked up the whole tray and walked back to his table, it was like 30 cinnamon buns. Nobody else at his table. The grossest behavior I've seen occurred in a small restaurant in Philadelphia. Last year, I was enjoying my meal when I heard a ruckus at a table across the room. The patrons were a man, a woman I assumed to be his wife, and two children I assumed belonged to them. The extremely angry man was screaming at his waitress, who was cowering behind his vicious words. His biggest complaint was that she was too slow in delivering his food. She tried to explain that the kitchen was backed up, and it wasn't her fault, but he cut her off and continued to shout at her, banging his fist on the table. I was appalled that no one in the restaurant's management came up to quiet the guy or to defend their employee. 
I didn't intervene, although I wanted to, because who knows if a volatile guy like that might have a gun on him. When the waitress brought my bill a while later, I handed her an extra $20 with the words this is an extra tip for you in compensation for the bullshit you just had to tolerate. She started to cry and thank me for sympathizing with her. She added that since the belligerent man felt free to act that way in public, he probably mistreated his wife and children at home, and she was concerned for them.